So this is the Focke Wolf FW189. It's a reconnaissance aircraft. And you're working at Focke Wolf and you're producing lots of new designs for the Luftwaffe. And then you bring out a brilliant piston engine fighter, Focke Wolf 190. And then gradually you're improving it with the D9 version and then the TA-152 which is the ultimate piston engine fighter but then after all this progress along comes this upstart, the Messerschmitt 262, the first jet fighter. So all your all your work on piston engine fighters has now become redundant. So it's back to the drawing board. Adolf Hitler has just turned up here to make sure that uh, they're loading enough bombs on the Messerschmitt 262 to slow it down so that the rival British design, the Gloucester Meteor, can catch it. So Focke Wolf, just remembering their reconnaissance aircraft, the OWL, with twin booms. And if you look at the tails, you will see a family resemblance. And this is a design called a Flitzer. And it's pretty unique because it has a jet engine. Plus, if you look closely, there's a, a smaller rocket engine, which was to help it uh, climb to height. I couldn't resist just showing it alongside the uh, British de Havilland Vampire. Great minds think alike. But the other Focke Wolf design, which I think it's not very fashionable these days to say that these German projects had a big influence, but I really think they did. I mean, the Russians made a brilliant yak fighter. And Stalin was such in such a hurry to get jet engines, they, and I want them now, and he was a hard man to say no to. They put one of the Messerschmitt 262 engines and this is what you ended up with. I mean, it did fly. But how did you get from this to this amazing design? Well, it helped that the British sold you their jet engines. And this is why a lot of early jet fighters have a very round fuselage because the British engines were very round, unlike the engines in the Messerschmitt 262. I mean, they're almost... And when you look down from the top, you can really see quite a family resemblance. So I think the Korean War where the MiG-15 and the beautiful US F-86 Sabre fought each other, I think really it was Focke Wolf versus Messerschmitt. Because, again, the Americans found a lot of German plans, Messerschmitt prototypes, 
and the only people who actually admitted that they had help from German engineers post-war was this little surprise, the Swedish Saab Tunnen. Again, it has the British jet engine and as you can see, well, it was called a flying barrel and you know, this one does look like a cartoon aircraft. But again, it's almost like the same family. And also controversially, I'm going to recommend PM kits. They're made in Turkey. They're very good value for money. A lot of people don't like them because they're very simple without too much detail. But they do a nice range of Luftwaffe 1946 project, projects. The uh, Jack 15 over here is also a PM kit. The MiG-15 and Sabre are new Airfix models. The Saab is a Heller kit which has just been re-released. I'm a big fan of Heller kits. The de Havilland Vampire is also one. The Yak is a hobby boss. The Flitzer is a Ravel kit. And the two rivals are the Airfix Meteor and Airfix 262. Our Haskauer Hitler and its Mercedes. Another kit that doesn't get a lot of love is the Frog TA-152 because Revel keep releasing it as a brand new kit. This is an actual Frog moulding that I've built up. I think it builds into a reasonable kit. This is the Airfix B9. And the Matchbox. FW190 and then back to the Airfix FW189 Hope you enjoyed having a look at the airfield Many of you will probably have your own thoughts and opinions on this I uh, hope you have enjoyed looking at the aircraft and some of these early jets and lift off are done designs are very interesting so enjoy your building thank you ever so much for watching if you like and subscribe I really do appreciate it thank you everyone